Okay, uh, good morning, everyone. Yeah, good to be here and uh, good to uh, be part of this class. Let's pray and we will begin. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence in our midst. Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Thank you, Lord, that, uh, Father, even as we abide in your word, that, Father, uh, uh, Lord, we are near to you, Father God. Let, let your word abide in our hearts, Father God. And we just pray that, Lord, you will help us to be established in your word this morning. We give you praise. We give you thanks. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so I was just thinking uh, this morning that it's such a privilege to um, actually be reading the word of God, isn't it? So uh, amidst all the other things that we can do, nothing like spending time in God's word. Uh, for me as a teacher to kind of go through the word of God and study it uh, to share with all of you is a great privilege. I'm sure uh, for you to be seated here and spend time in the word of God is also a great privilege. So we are really grateful that we have this opportunity. Let me begin by recapping quickly on what we have learned in the last class. We looked at the introduction to prayer and we said that prayer is more than speaking to God. It is um, our communion with God. Uh, it is a ministry. It's a warfare. And, uh, you know, prayer is, is really powerful. God hears our prayer as well as um, he answers the prayers that we pray. Uh, we also said that prayer, when we consider why God created prayer, you know, as a design or a system, we know that we are able to release the authority that God has given us. Now, let me ask the question, if there are, uh, if you find evil in the world, wrong things happen, isn't it? There are uh, floods, there are tornadoes, there are disasters, there are uh, calamities. Why isn't God doing anything about it? Based on what I taught you in the last class. Why can we ask the question, God, why are you not doing anything about this? Would that be right? We've looked at this in the last session. So I'm asking you. How did God create originally man? What did God tell man? You must rule and reign, isn't it? God gave us authority, dominion. He wanted us to be above right, all the creatures and to subdue them, to subdue, isn't it? The things that take place in the world. Now, if something is going wrong, can we ask God the question, why are you not doing anything about it? Would that be correct? Okay, you can look at your notes if you want to. We've already talked about this in the last class. So, okay, Shekhar says, God gives us the authority. That's true. What else? Okay. All right. So uh, Moses is saying that uh, he gives us free will. And if something happens, we are responsible. We can't blame God. <laughs> okay. Correct. So Moses is saying that we have been made responsible or put in charge. So if when, when something goes wrong, we can't blame God. Because you remember we saw all the scriptures which said that when God created man, he, he gave him you know dominion. Uh, he, he made man and woman in the image of God. 
we saw how scriptures tell us that the uh, heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth belongs to us. So our understanding is that God has, uh, we use the word deputization, okay, in English. It simply means that we have been put in charge completely on the earth and God will not interfere. So if it is our responsibility, God doesn't interfere in that. God doesn't suddenly intervene and say, okay, you know, something is going wrong. Let me do this. Let me figure this out. Let me fix it. God doesn't intervene because he respects the, uh, the handing over of the responsibility or in other words deputization okay so i hope we are all understanding what we are what i'm trying to say so the deputization that god has instituted is perfect he will not intervene or interfere because whose responsibility is it it is man's responsibility Okay. So this is one of the reasons why we see um, suffering, evil, so many things in the world. One reason, but there are many other reasons as well. But how can man take charge when things like this are happening? How can we take charge? By praying, yes, correct. That, that is one of the ways. Uh, but we have to take our responsibility. If God has given us responsibility um, by making wise choices, by being aligned to the purpose of God, the word of God, what happens? We make good decisions, good choices. Then we are able to um, sort out these things that are going on. But in addition to that, in a spiritual sense, uh, we can exercise our authority through prayer. Okay, So prayer in addition to doing the right things, prayer is a manner in which we can release our dominion and authority. So this is something that we must always remember. And prayer is very important. We saw how even in the experience of Elijah, the prophet, he already knew the will of God. He already knew the word of God, what God is going to do. But what did Elijah do? He prayed seven times. Why did he pray seven times? He understood how prayer works. God wants a man to partner with him. Can God do? He can do it. But he wants man to co-work, co-labor, partner with him. Okay. So Elijah understood how the authority flows through our prayer. Similarly, we saw the example of Daniel. God gave a promise that the, uh, the Israelites will be set free from Babylon after 70 years. It was already decided. It was already communicated to the people. But what did Daniel do? He fasted. He prayed. Now we can ask Daniel the question, Daniel, why are you praying? God already said this, this is the will of God that he is going to um, restore the people. He is going to release the people. But God always wants a man or a woman to step in, co-labor, partner in prayer. Because that's one way of releasing the authority, God-given authority. Okay, Just like the original design in the Garden of Eden, he created us with dominion. But what happened? What happened to that dominion? I'm just recapping. We've discussed all this in the last class. So, okay. All right, there are answers here which uh, say that we can't judge anything to partner with God in prayer to see uh, a move in this world. God does not intervene in the affairs of men without being invited. All right, uh, great. So that, that's what we've been recapping so far. So in the original design, God gave man the authority. But what happened after that? Authority shifted. Correct. To whom? Satan. Why did authority shift to Satan? Sin. Correct. So you see that when we are not walking in obedience to God, what happens? Something goes wrong. 
isn't it in this case sin man sinned the authority shifted that is why we saw in luke chapter 4 when jesus is fasting what did uh, uh, satan say i will give you the kingdoms i will give you right the the uh, rulership over the nations but how did that happen because originally god gave it to man and woman but now satan is saying it's in my grip it's in my hands so when we look at certain scriptures we are also told that uh, you know satan is called as the ruler of this world he is not the ruler but right now he is interfering with the affairs of man so the authority shifted because of sin okay but what is the good news yeah so jesus died on the cross for us and we will study about this in detail but when jesus died on the cross what he has done is he has um restored back that authority to us so what do we say about satan satan is defeated okay we use the term defeated right so satan is defeated and we now have regained the authority so if you are a believer i am a believer that is why we say or oh, rebuke the devil rebuke the demons cast out the demons we command the demons why why how how can we do that because authority has been restored back to us got it so this is what we need to understand as far as prayer is concerned now talking about the church um, why do we say that the church is powerful when i say church i don't mean you know your church my church i don't mean local churches the body of christ why is the body of christ powerful why is the body of christ powerful we've discussed all this ah yes hmm? okay so god gave the authority to the church okay uh, god gave the authority to the church that's true um remember we said last time jesus said i give you the keys of the kingdom so when you have the keys you know when you have the keys of something you you have authority over that you have authority right so i give you the keys of the kingdom the things in the kingdom of god god has given us the authority to operate in those things as believers as the church okay that's so powerful that's so powerful so every believer no matter how young we are you know maybe we just accepted jesus 2 hours ago the scripture is applicable jesus says i give you the keys of the kingdom all of us no matter how young we are how mature we are in the lord we have authority i give you the keys of the kingdom and what can you do in that passage jesus said you can bind and you can loose okay so we can bind the works of the devil and we can uh, release the things of the kingdom like the love of god the peace of god the joy of god the power of god we have the authority we don't have to stand and watch helplessly and think oh all this calamity is happening we can't do anything no we can pray we can bind the devil we can say stop devil you can't do this and all the crimes that are taking place we can pray against it and say we bind the spirits which are causing uh um, you know destruction which are causing uh, confusion or uh, disharmony we can pray against the works of satan and we can release the works of the kingdom what are the works of the kingdom we can release peace in that situation so when i pray and i say i declare victory i declare peace what's happening i'm not simply saying but by faith i have the keys of the kingdom right so the things of the kingdom i can release so powerful if all believers if we by faith begin to pray this way we can exercise our authority so god wants us to exercise our authority through prayer and he won't just you know bypass uh, uh, the structure that he himself has created and the deputization i already talked about it now uh, let's keep moving on 
we said that though god is self sufficient meaning he can do all things it's not that he can't do and he needs our help right but he has chosen to work with us again it's a huge privilege that each of us have and um, these are all the reasons why we must engage in prayer because we can release our authority we can speak to god we can be of help to people in need and we also saw that god rewards us when we pray when we go pray in secret god rewards us openly okay these are all things that we have already discussed and in the last class we started chapter 2 where we discussed the right foundations for prayer we began by stating lot of wrong things uh, we pray because we are supposed to pray we pray as a ritual we pray as an obligation or you know we pray to um impress god impress people these are all wrong reasons to pray okay but there are the right foundations for prayer and today we will talk about those right foundations the first one is to understand the nature of god god has a nature okay god has a nature when we sing when we um worship now we say things like uh, you are good isn't it god is a just god he is faithful uh, he is powerful so we describe the nature of god in all these ways we even say things like uh, lord you are the healer you are the provider you are um, the peace giver where do we get this idea about the nature of god who told us that god is good god is just god is faithful who told us scriptures okay so scriptures we understand the nature of god uh through the word of god so it is the word of god that reveals to us who god is you know how he is and we can observe that when you start right in the beginning go back to genesis you read about how he created adam and eve right just think about it everything he created was good there was no evil in him he couldn't create anything evil because there's nothing evil in god god is so good that he can only release what is in him so we understand everything he created was beautiful it was good it was functioning well he created a you know perfect world so from there we get the picture oh he is a creator god he is almighty he is good uh he is so organized don't you think so right each day he had a plan okay today i'm going to create this everything was done next day create this everything was done so perfect so um you know uh, so, sort of uh, systematic so many things we can use to describe and as you study the bible you won't find a contradiction to that meaning it won't change he was good in the beginning and when you look at jesus how when people came to jesus they said oh i'm sick jesus heal me or my son is oppressed by a demon spirit uh, set him free did jesus change did he show a different nature of god do you think i mean you don't have to just shake your head because i'm expecting an answer from you but what do you think it's consistent right same thing same way that he ministered in the old covenant you find that he did the same things healing people setting them free uh, giving them miracles breakthroughs and if you look at this uh, scripture hebrews 13:8 it says jesus christ the same yesterday today and forever more okay jesus christ the same yesterday today and for ever so that just tells us that god has a nature and that nature doesn't change all right now when we pray we have to pray in accordance with the nature of god 
if i pray a prayer which is not aligned to the nature of god we said that god is good there is only goodness in god okay now if i pray a prayer which is evil it cannot be it will not be accommodated by god now you can ask a question why i want to pray that prayer why why can you know uh, god not accommodate it because we cannot pray against the nature of god if god is good no evil prayer will work isn't it so if god is um, a just god any prayer of injustice will not work you know a, a request for corruption will not work because we are praying against the nature of god now if god is compassionate and we are praying a prayer which says god you cause calamity you destroy those people it won't work because he is a god of compassion grace mercy so for me to be effective in my prayer life the first thing is i have to understand the nature of god so when i understand the nature of god and then i pray it will be effective or my prayers will be successful because it's not clashing with god's agenda or it's not clashing with god's purpose now if we pray, pray prayers like lord i want to grow in you i want to grow in the knowledge of your word give me more grace to serve you um give me more anointing to minister in the power of the holy spirit do you think all these prayers are valid yes or no yes how do you know it's very much in line with scripture isn't it and we can see in scripture that this is what god wants he wants us to grow he wants us to mature he wants us to know him better he wants us to let go all the evil ways right uh, all the all the things of the past leave it behind move forward with god grow in god uh, and receive the purpose of god for our lives so when we pray in accordance to the nature of god those prayers will be valid and for that we must understand the nature of god so from where will we understand the nature of god scriptures so the more you read your bible okay so when we read the bible don't just read it like uh, today i have to read matthew chapter 1 okay i i'm finished right you keep the clock maybe 5 minutes uh, stop watch start uh, you just read it finished or oh, 5 minutes finished today is finished then somebody will ask us the question did you read your bible yeah yeah i read my bible today one chapter i read it okay what did you understand um yeah it was saying something it was saying something about god right that's not how we must read the bible we must read the bible to understand who god is so let's take for example if you take matthew chapter 1 and you read matthew chapter 1 over there what do you see so and so begot so and so begot so and so begot so and so so you have this full genealogy isn't it what can you understand from that about god tell me two two things you can understand about the nature of god from there nobody has read that chapter before okay so we have some comments here charles says he is a god of families okay wonderful yeah that's that's uh, one of the uh, insights we can gain from that passage anything else comes to your mind when you read about god sister that he has history yes sister a uh, please repeat he has a genealogy his father okay i didn't quite get that okay sorry sister get through i couldn't hear you very clearly so if you don't mind if you can type i think genealogy <laughs> and he has a history we have a history from where jesus was born okay we get the history of where jesus was born okay fine we we get that 
Now, there are a few more uh, points here in the chat. SS shares, he had planned our redemption beforehand. God is gracious, says Lucy. Sonia says, reveals the genealogy of Jesus. Yeah, that's right. So we can see that, you know, uh, though it sounds like a historical re uh, record, remember God had promised to the, to the uh, you know, like the children of Israel and even to David, he had promised saying, you will not lack anybody on your throne. You notice how Jesus came in the genealogy of David, isn't it? So it reminds us that he's a promise-keeping God. Many generations before, he had promised. But when you read that one chapter, one of the things that comes to our mind is, after many generations, he still kept his word. He's a promise-keeping God. Okay? So I'm just giving us some something for us to think about. So the word of God reveals the nature of God. And that's what, when we read the Bible, we have to see, okay, what does it tell me about God? Uh, you know, okay, and God is so, he doesn't miss the details, isn't it? So and so, because so and so, all the names are there. It's amazing. So there is so much we can learn about God. Every time you read Matthew 1, you can know something more about God. So the nature of God. If I want to grow in my prayer life, I have to grow in the word. Why? Because the word will help me understand who God really is. So the more I know the nature of God, my prayers can be aligned to his nature and they will be effective. Right? So uh, that's the first point that I want to make for us. The right foundation for prayer is understanding the nature of God. And God, um, you know, even through his covenant names, when you look at some names in the Bible, they start with the Jehovah, like Jehovah, um, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Jireh, no, Jehovah uh, Sitkenu. So there are some names that start with that, uh, that word Jehovah. We call them the covenant names. Okay? That simply means that God has made a promise with us. And this is a solemn promise. A covenant is a very solemn promise uh, which God will not break. So when God reveals himself and he says, Jehovah Jireh, it simply means he will provide. He has made a promise with us. Whatever situation you are in, I am your Jehovah Jireh. I will provide. And we must put our faith in that. And so when I pray, I will pray something like, God, thank you. You have revealed that you are my provider. I know that you will provide in this situation. I know that, you know, those who fear you will not lack any good thing. I know the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. So what is happening? I am praying in line with the nature of God. I won't pray a prayer which says, God, you never help me. I don't know why you don't help me. Don't you know that I am in need? If I pray prayers like that, actually, it's not aligned to the nature of God. Because what is God telling us? He already said, I've made a promise with you. I will provide for you. Did he provide for the uh, people in the, in the wilderness, in the desert? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Right? So he will provide in any situation. And we have to pray as per the, uh, the covenant names of God as well which reveal for us the nature of God. So understand who God is and pray on the basis of that. Scriptures reveal who God is. His covenant names reveal who God is. And just want to remind us, he is the God of the impossible. Sometimes our prayers are very limited. We can't see more than, you know, this week, this year. We can't see. We just pray, okay, God, whatever you can do, you do. Very limited we pray. The Bible tells us, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Nothing shall be impossible for our God. So he's the God of the impossible. So when we pray, when I understand that my God is the God of the impossible, he's a miracle working God, it gives me courage to pray into my future. I can pray prayers like, God, I know you're going to use me to establish a local church. I know you're going to use me to you know, uh, serve you in this nation. I can pray prayers like this. Why? Because he's the God of the impossible. Right now, maybe it doesn't look like it's possible. Maybe you know, I have too many limitations. But 
the nature of god reveals that he is the god of the impossible so i can pray prayers like this and i can see the fruit of those prayers okay so that's uh, a little bit about the nature of god all right so let's continue we'll move to the next foundation for um uh, effective prayer which is intimacy with god okay intimacy with god uh, now intimacy is a term that depicts closeness okay depicts um, you know close relationship so we are being told that we must have a close relationship with god now we can all have any level of relationship that we want to but what is it that god is inviting us to a close relationship with him who is god to us relationally heavenly father yes thank you sister so heavenly father how do we relate to our father we are generally you know bold we are we are open we um we are very comfortable isn't it when it comes to our a uh, father so in the same way no matter how our earthly relationship has been one thing we know that the heavenly father that the bible talks about that he is uh, a wonderful father isn't it so uh, we can develop a close relationship with god because he is our heavenly father now prayer is not so much about um learning all the steps or the keys to make it work it's more about a relationship okay it's more about um if if you take a good friendship okay don't you think that you know it it um, takes the will of the people in that friendship to uh, to keep communicating to be uh, you know cordial to each other and to bless one another it does it takes some effort to build a good friendship so in the same way we when we talk about our relationship with our heavenly father we need to uh, desire and also uh, put in that kind of uh, i'm using the word effort but you know it's it's something that we can do happily and willingly to draw near to god uh, so that we can have a closeness or i mentioned the word intimacy or fellowship with the father so how do we how do we um, you know develop this kind of a relationship we'll talk a little bit about that but you know the bible encourages us to be close to god in john chapter 15 and verse 7 we are reminded that god's word should dwell in our hearts so can i request somebody to read john 15 and verse 7 please John chapter fifteen verse seven: If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it will and it shall be done for you. Okay. So notice here it says, "If you abide in me." Okay, what is uh, abide? Anyone? What does the word abide mean? remain remain okay so when we visit someone we just go there and we come back okay if you're visiting a friend or you're visiting a a, a a relative of yours you may go spend one hour and you come back but that is not called as abide you know when we use the term abide abide is when you stay so in your home whatever is your address generally when we give people our address what does it mean i live here okay i abide here that's the meaning of of abiding so abide what is jesus telling us if you abide in abide me you know you got to stay in abide or you got to live there you got to live there and uh, 
that also means that you know i'm not just coming and going sometimes our relationship with god can be like that when i want something god you are everything to me you know when i want blessings i see god when i want something good to happen in my life i say god do this miracle after that i say okay bye see you later what is that we are just visiting god whenever we want convenience that's not what john 15 is saying john 15 is saying if you abide in me meaning come live don't keep going you know every now and then don't just step out and go come back it doesn't work like that if you abide in me and my words abide in you meaning the word of god is living inside us it's always there so when we read the word we put it into our hearts we think about it we meditate on it it becomes a part of the way we think it becomes a part of the way we live it becomes a part of the way we speak what begins to happen you know uh, he says you ask what you desire and it shall be done for you meaning when you are so close to me your prayers will be answered like that isn't it that that's what it's saying when you abide in me my words abide in you you ask whatever you desire it will be done for you okay so intimacy with god because he's our heavenly father we have to develop a strong relationship with him and then what happens my prayer life becomes so effective okay so how to make your prayer life effective it's not uh, actually relationship with god is the main thing that we should be talking about but one of the results is that uh, our prayer life becomes very effective or successful even psalm 37 and verse 4 it's a uh, you know quite familiar scripture where we read delight yourself also in the lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart so how do we get the desires of our heart first of all our heart has to be aligned or in line with the purposes of god or delight in god meaning we are always enjoying god and then what happens as a result whenever we pray we have the answers to that so develop a strong relationship with god and that's the place where uh, we will find success for our prayers now the bible teaches us that we need to have fellowship with the father the son and the holy spirit okay so there are three persons in the godhead the father the son and the holy spirit so the father yes we generally commune with the father how do we commune uh, we pray we say heavenly father right we come to you in the name of jesus we are fellowshipping with the father uh, how do we fellowship with the with the son again we can uh, even speak to jesus jesus you know um uh, thank you for dying on the cross for for me uh, we fellowship with the son by reading the word because the son is who the word isn't it the word became flesh and dwelt among us so the word of god is who actually the jesus the son of god then the holy spirit we can have communion with the holy spirit you know paul said that he said um um sweet communion with the holy spirit what is communion communion is partnership fellowship so you can imagine a good friend who is with you okay maybe uh, i know we have lots of friends but maybe one or two friends are somewhat you kind of uh, click with them better uh, and you spend a lot of time with them so when we talk about communion with the holy spirit it's somewhat like that all the time speaking to the holy spirit partnering with the holy spirit maybe you know i'm teaching this class while partnering with the holy spirit i can say holy spirit empower me give me the right words let it be a blessing to the people so what's happening i'm partnering with the holy spirit to do what god is calling me to do so in this way from the moment that you wake up till the moment that you sleep we can be communing fellowshipping with the father the son and the holy spirit so prayer is not limited only to our prayer times like if you have your personal devotion you know whatever 5:30 to 6 o'clock uh, that's the time of prayer the rest of the time i'm free all the time we can fellowship and commune with the 
Holy Spirit. So when we do that, now think with me. If you have a close friend like that and you're keeping in touch, uh, generally it happens in school, right? So kids go and then they find this uh, friend. These days I've heard kids saying, uh, what is that? Uh, uh, BFF, best friend forever. Okay, they would have just met the other child one day ago, but suddenly they are best friend forever. This is meet my BFF. Okay, so that's the way they connect with another child. And what happens? They are spending time with them. They want their parents to give them permission to come on the weekends. Okay, you come to my house. I'll go to your house. They're spending a lot of time interacting, sharing, playing together. In this way, they are building their friendship, isn't it? Now, it's somewhat similar. When we want to have fellowship with God, we need God all the time. We don't look at God as, you know, a, a time with God as a compartmentalized thing. That, okay, only at this time I will spend time with God. The whole time we can fellowship with the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. But of course, when we set aside some special time, it is helpful. And, you know, we will talk about it later on. So in this way, we are called to fellowship with the Godhead. Um, when you look at the life of Jesus, Jesus spent a lot of time with the Father. Yes or no? Yeah, we, we see that, isn't it? When you look at the life of Jesus, uh, he prayed to the Father. Uh, when you know, it was evening, it was morning, in the night, whenever he was, um, uh, he finished some meetings, he made time to spend with the father. So a lot of time he was spending with the father. So what's happening? Fellowship, isn't it? There is this fellowship of the father and the son. And that is one of the reasons why Jesus was confident the way he was, because he told, I already know what the father, I do what the father wants me to do. So he had developed this relation, strong relationship with the father, which helped him to know what to pray. And every time he prayed, it was successful. We don't see that Jesus said, be healed. And that person didn't get healed. Has that happened? Never. There was only one incident when, you know, there was a person who was blind and uh, Jesus, you know, uh, um, uh, I don't remember whether he touched his eye or... But when he tried to see, he couldn't see clearly. But the second time when Jesus ministered to that person, he was able to see. That's the only time where we see something like two, two steps, right? Or twice. But otherwise, everywhere, one word, it always happened. And you think, how come for Jesus, God, Father is answering? What about me? Why? Because Jesus is so connected to the Father. Jesus has such a strong fellowship with the Father. So each of us can develop that beautiful relationship with God. So how can we have this strong relationship with God? Through prayer of intimacy. Prayer of intimacy is when you know we, we take time to um, adore God, to honor God. You know, have we lately taken time to just sit down and say, God, thank you so much. You've been so good to me. Uh, you've blessed me so much. You've given me so many opportunities. I'm really grateful and I want to live my life for you. So what's happening? We're developing that closeness with God. When we are opening up our hearts and we're saying, Father, I value whatever you're doing in my life, right? So spend time, prayer of intimacy, worship. We can worship God. How can we worship God? Uh, in uh, John 4, 23 and 24, uh, you know, there we see Jesus said that those who worship must worship in spirit and in truth. Okay, spirit and in truth. What does it mean? It means sincerity. So when I worship God, when I'm sincere, I will build my relationship with God. We have to be sincere. Look at the life of David. When you read the Psalms of David, do you find him being sincere, honest? Yeah, you do. Even Jesus, at times when, you know, in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus was so honest with the Father, isn't it? So when we come in sincerity, that's when God can really do something in our lives. But if we are pretending that, no, everything is okay, I'm okay, 
Yeah, and remember we uh, went through that publication, laying the axe to the root, and we saw we may carry uh, issues like uh, pride, self, lust, jealousy, um, and there are many others, right? Like you can have bitterness, so many other things. But if I'm carrying these things within me and I'm saying, okay, I don't have to deal with it, or I'm pretending like uh, it's okay, God will understand, it won't work because it's not sincerity. We are just trying to cover up. But that will not help us build a strong relationship with God. So we need uh, uh, we need to worship God in spirit and in truth on the basis of the word. What does the word say? Am I living my life like the way the word says? If I am, then I'm building my intimacy with the Lord. Transparency. Transparency is also when, you know, David says um, uh, in Psalm 139, Verses 23 and 24. Uh, they, he, he will say something like, Search me, O God. Know my heart. Search me. If there is any uh, you know, uh, anxiety, whatever is there within me, Lord, I'm coming to you with honesty. Right? So transparency. We must not pretend with God. We have to deal with the issues that God is revealing to us. Uh, and uh, listening to him. So when we listen to the word of God, when we are dwelling in the word of God, spending time in the word of God, even that will help us to develop a strong relationship with God um, and being in his presence. So from time to time, when we um, spend time in the presence of God, for example, here you have that supernatural hour, you have your devotions, you have your group prayer time. What's happening? We are intentionally tuning in to the presence of God. And we are saying, okay, God, I want to become more sensitive to what you're saying, what you're doing. What happens? We are building our relationship with God, our communion with God. So these are all ways in which one can uh, develop their intimacy with the Lord. So when we develop our intimacy with God, what are some of the outcomes? You know, the Bible says, that we will know God better, right? For example, you know, uh, for those of us, um, you know, maybe the married folk can uh, attest to this or uh, even like parents and children. When, let's say, the mother is upset, the child already knows. Just by the look of the mother, the child already knows, I don't have her approval, okay? This is going to be tough. Why? Because familiarity, interacting so much with the parent, knowing the parent so closely, you can predict what they're going to say, what they're going to do. But think about this, when we are spending so much time with God, okay, in his word, in his presence, his voice becomes very familiar. Oh, what does God want me to do? Does God want me to do this or no? It's easier to answer those questions because I already know God closely. You understand? So we know his voice better. We can understand his plans, his will, his ways. Um, and, you know, we keep growing in that. Uh, and we will also become fruitful in the things that God is calling us to do. So let's do this. Let's uh, take a break right now. And uh, we will come back to continue in the right foundations uh, to prayer and if there's any other questions then you know please do uh, ask those questions and uh, it'll be really good to have an interactive class so all right let's uh, go in for a break we'll come back in 10 minutes thank you